My name is Bo Smith, and it's B-E-A-U, which is short for beautiful. Um, I'm the creator writer of the comic book series Why Not Earth. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So, Bo, what has it been like adapting your kind of original vision into something in an entirely different medium? It, it's been fun. Fun in the fact that... I got a taser under the table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching you. Yeah. Fun in the fact that... I've stated before that I've always written Wine on Earth 35 to 40 years old in the prime of her black badge career. And Emily has opened this, this wonderful world of basically the origin of Wine on Earth when she is younger and how she went from a mess to the best. And, oh, that's good. I like that. and it just. <laughs> I could not have written it better myself, which I really couldn't have, but I sure wish I could, and I will lie and say one day that I did. <laughs> but but it really is, it's, it's, seeing, it's seeing characters yeah, that you created in a room by yourself come to life is just, oh my gosh. It, when I went to the set and everything I saw, he set, got his hands on a flamethrower somehow. I don't know. <laughs> like it, and that was like the only day we had a flamethrower on set. So of course I'm getting calls like, "Well, Bo's got a flamethrower," and I was like, was, "Well, we better oh. film that because." <laughs> My wife Beth, I wanted to put an apple on her head. I was gonna try to shoot it off, and then, but I went in there and everything was wine on earth, wine on earth everywhere, and it was very the cliche is surreal. It was if I ever you know wanted to do drugs, this must be what it was like, and it was just an amazing feeling like that and and the part that I came through most of all was the cast the crew and I, I mean I talked to everybody from transportation to accounting everybody up there it was like family up there and that was huge because if they all wanted to be a part of a, a family I created in a room by myself then you can't you can't get a higher compliment a better birthday gift or Christmas present than that. So how does the comic book arc differ from the television series arc, or does it? Well, what we have done, we're trying to do a hybrid with the comic book where uh, the traditional uh, wine on earth readers from the last 20 years can pick this new series up and go, oh yeah, it's the origin of wine on earth. It looks, but, <laughs> and they're watching the television show, they go, oh yeah, Doc Holliday, he's never been in there before. Waverly Herb, oh, this is new stuff that they're, these are gifts they're getting now, so they're getting extra. For the people that have never read a comic book, never will possibly, watch the television show, if they do pick it up, they're gonna go, well, this is the wine on earth I see on TV. Plus, she's getting to travel, she's getting to do all these other adventures where she has the, the, the luxury and the freedom of going in depth with each character. I've got 18 to 20 pages of comic. I've got to do what she can have. And a lot in, of heads to blow up. Yeah, in five, <laughs> in five uh, uh, minutes of something, I have to put it into five panels on a page. So that's the, the art and craft of doing comics and the art and craft of writing the screenplays. But it's, it's she's opened up a world to me, guys, that uh, I'm excited about. So this, this what is, is, okay. Yeah. Uh, what, what if I give you the property to, to adapt it? Um, well, honestly, I have a history of writing. I've been lucky enough to kind of find my niche, which is um, show running genre shows with really strong female protagonists. I was on a show called Lost Girl for a really long time. I worked on a show called Killjoys, which is about bounty hunters in space, and the captain is a woman. Um, so IDW, we're looking, because it's such an extraordinary female character for a female showrunner, and I'm telling you, when they brought it to me, I thought, if you had cooked something up in the lab that checked off every one of my buttons, <laughs> it would be what on earth. It was just so awesome. First of all, she's so witty and funny, and she's such a mess and gets away with so much. Um, it's obviously set in the West. I grew up in Alberta, which is Canada's Montana. Uh, not Hannah, Montana, just to clarify that. Um, so I was really looking to go back home, and maybe I feel like that's been underrepresented on television, the West, to be honest. Like, um, you know, Fargo's doing it, Revenant, we had the crew who just did the Revenant. Um, I really was attracted to the idea of a supernatural western. I feel like it was due for a revival in a way that was really fun and kind of Robert Rodriguez meets Muff Buffy meets Frozen because of the sisters' relationship. Um, so, honestly, though, it was just the life and the tone of the comic. It's just so fun. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so fun and all unapologetic. And she is such an incredible three dimensional character. So, I feel so lucky um, that they let me do it. So, uh, and here we go. Yeah. Emily, you mentioned the Killjoys mm -hmm. and Lost Girl. I was wondering, 
you know, you have a history of working with really positive LGBT mm -hmm. queer characters. Why is that important to you? Are you and the, we're going to say that on this show. I'm Canadian, so uh, right. we're pretty open-minded, I would say. I'm really just interested yeah. with characters, to be honest about. I think the thing that I finally figured out in my writing career is I'm really interested in writing characters who, like the rest of us, are really struggling to become who they want to be versus who their parents or society or their peers tell them they should be or have to be. I think that comes from, first of all, just being a woman. Second of all, being really short. Uh, no. Um, so, you know, I grew up in a really open-minded household. Um, LGBT stuff was, like, always very important to my parents, um, just being representative and stuff like that. Um, and I think it really is still... Um, um, kind of an issue for our time, you know what I mean? I just think it's really interesting that things have changed so much in the last 10 years, as they should. So, the thing about Lost Girl that was so amazing was it really was about sexuality, and yet it was not. It was, we really never put labels on stuff, we really kind of celebrated all um, types of genders, all types of sex. Um, and that fan base is hungry for stuff where they are being represented in a way that maybe they can survive the season. So um, that's a really loyal fan base who are really um, hungry to see themselves represented on screen. So it's an honor to be able to put those characters on screen and hopefully reward those people who maybe haven't seen themselves on screen before. I know genre fans are really looking forward to it. Are you going to be working on the Killjoys anymore? I'm not, but God bless Michelle Labretta. We're such good friends, so she's the showrunner. Um, Shamir, who plays dolls, who you spoke to, was just on Killjoys. Uh, are you am I allowed to say that? I didn't say it too loud. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, she is. I cannot speak highly enough about the showrunner of that. She's been a real mentor to me. I say she's my Obi Wan, and she's like, I'm like two years older than you. Please stop saying that to people. Um, but you can be my Yoda. So there you go. As long as I get to be Han Solo. <laughs> anyway, uh, I love that show, and I love her. Um, just fe It's so nice to know other female showrunners who I can turn to, and she's really the person at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I don't think I can get this done. She's like, don't worry about putting on pants. You can do it. I believe in you. So I love that show, and I wish them all the best. And, I'd and then if I end up back in Toronto, yes, I would always go in and help them out if they need it. So. Now, you mentioned yeah. uh, the crew worked on The Revenant. Yeah, Fargo. So as well. Go as well. Hell on Wheels. I know this is what mixed up West and uh, Western and Supernatural. So, yeah. um, in telling them, like, how do you how do you accomplish the look for this uh, show to, to make it not old West, not necessarily frontier, but also right. hybrid sort of. Right. Uh, how can they achieve their goal? What do you do? Well, that's a great them? question yeah. because you know we were really determined when we started to take this on. You know, the Western is due for a resurgence, and we really want it. We call it a Chrome Western. Like, she's not going to ride a horse in this. It is a modern day Western. She's going to ride a motorbike. Like, she hates horses. Horses and they hate her. That's the funny thing about Winona. And the truth about the New West, like the truth about Alberta, is like it's an incredibly diverse, progressive kind of city right now. And like it's not what it used to be. You know what I mean? It's not sort of cowboy hats everywhere. Um, so one thing that was really important to us with the look was we really wanted to take from the comic book tradition. You know what I mean? We really wanted to have a rich kind of palette of color. When you think about westerns, you think about like kind of like yellows and washed out and stuff like that. We really wanted to kind of subvert that and. Make Make it really bright and bold. We really want that demon blood to splash across the screen. Those exploding heads. We want you to get your money's worth. So, so we had an incredible director of photography called Gavin Smith, who really worked on our look. Um, and I think it feels really fresh. Sci-fi is absolutely thrilled with the way the show looks. I think it's incredibly cinematic. But again, it really speaks to that graphic novel tradition. Um, so I'm really pleased with it. Yeah. And we had the best crew in the business, so that makes it easy. Now, obviously, the comic. I mean, when, anytime you have a creation, it's kind of like your child. You know, and so in adapting it where you're kind of messing with your kid there. Yeah. Um, was there anything there that the, the adaptation on television wanted to do that you were completely against or vice versa? I, you know, I, I, I do get this question because this is a, a question that I, I did anticipate at the beginning. Even before Emily and I ever met, talked, anything like that, and I just read the Bible. Guys, uh, you know, I'm not lying. There has been nothing. There is not been one single thing. I mean, we're even talking about initially, they're going, well, why not it's going to be Brunette? And I, I know a lot of other comic creator friends of mine, peers of mine, that would have gone, well, there's no way in hell that's going to happen. <laughs> but to me, I'm thinking, they're doing her origin. There's a reason. This isn't just, you know, this is 
it's a fresh start and it should be because not all of us were the same at 27 that we were at 40 you know I, I'm not judging anybody's age <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just was and I, I really sincerely as a creator always hope that I keep an open mind and try to keep an open mind to that and being, and I'll tell you something else, being from a small town in West Virginia, I was raised in, in a very conservative household. I mean, it was Leave it to Beaver. I'm, I tend to lean conservative and stuff, but everybody I've ever worked with in comic books, my first publishers were as near socialist as you could get. That never came up with the creation of comics and creativity because all we wanted to do was create really good stories. And that means nothing. If you can have civil discussions and learn for a little bit from each other, great. But... I, I tell you, nothing. She is. I've I've made a cake, and they. I put can the, step out if you want. They <laughs> put the best icing on it that you could ever eat, and I I, I really do. And I, I I don't mean to sound like I'm gushing or grand grandstand, but every time I get a daily in, I'm learning something new, and it's just it's it's wonderful. I, I hate to sound like some, you know. Bo is it. so generous. No, He's so open-minded. He'd send me an email once a week telling me a scene he liked <laughs> or a take he liked, and it was really important <laughs> to us. Just for the record, obviously, we loved the material, but he was happy. You know, we wanted him involved. We wanted him to see the audition. That's something else you've got to look at with the deal we have and stuff like that. They were under no obligation to show me anything, to tell me anything. I mean, it was a, and they have made me a part of everything from day one. And I'm just seriously thankful. For them. I mean, that, I, I don't understand my peers who have done things and have done nothing but complain about it. And it's no, this is a wider audience she's bringing to a creation of mine. And oh my gosh, it's like you know, handing your kid off at school to the best teacher in town. So there's there's no problem. None. Is there an episode or scene you guys are very excited for fans to see? Oh my God, so many. There's a lot, and I have not. I can again. This is me talking from an outside, and I hope I'm not giving anything away. Do it. No, is, go. Is the mailbox scene. No, you can say that. My favorite scene that I've seen so far is this beautifully shot, beautifully dialogued scene of Winona and Waverly sitting by the fire outside their homestead. And Michael, uh, Tim Razan, who's playing Doc Holliday, their mailbox got destroyed. He's putting up a new one. And it's showing back. It is, when you see this, if it didn't touch your humanity, not your heart so much, but your humanity in some way, to let you know that here are people that have made some bad choices at time, walk down some but you know, their, their hearts are good. It's, it's an amazing scene to me. And in the scene that, um, when I was in Calgary and, and was very fortunate, Ron Murphy was the director, director at that yep. point, called me up from the place where I was freezing, goes, Bo, 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 come here, I want you to do something. Oh, he wants me to see the scene closer. And it's a confrontational scene between the major bad guy and the secondary bad guy. And I'm, you know, it's a powerful scene, I just want, I want you to assist direct on this. And you know, urine is going down the side of my leg. I go, <laughs> I go no, you're kidding. He goes, no, 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 no. And he, you know, framed this, helped me. To, that scene, when I went home and saw the dailies and stuff, I mean, really, I was, here I am, you know, 61 years going, that's me, I have to do that, you know, and there's just, there's a lot of scenes in there, but again, the, what I always call the mailbox scene, yeah. just will always touch my heart. I'm going to go the whole other route, I'm excited for some of the amazing ways she dispatches demons back to hell, <laughs> like, there is just some um, dirty, fun stuff I hope you guys have to turn away from in the best possible way so I just think we had a lot of fun there's a lot of dark comedy kind of an evil dead sort of feeling to some of it and that's the stuff I really love I really just think that's so fun we had such a good prosthetics team so and like kind of a small operation such good effects so I'm really excited about that can we stuff. can we just take a mark and write testosterone on hers and estrogen <laughs> well you went forward oh the scene you directed has some has some cojones yeah, oh, exactly. That was, that was great. Yeah. And that was a flamethrower. That, that was a flamethrower. Uh, we heard about the flamethrower. <laughs> I know, exactly. Well, I was like, good day to show up on set, Bob. Oh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't know if you all talked to Michael Eklund yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He did. he's Guys, so good. Something, just a little tip when you're watching the series. The man's a, a consummate actor. I mean, he truly is. He's Daniel Day-Lewis. He's De Niro. You know, he's, he's that 
but he is the best on screen, under the breath growler that you will ever see. In your and I say that and it kind of brings smiles, but when he does it on there, you're going, Damn, I don't want to mess with this guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's not an exaggerated Doctor Doom kind of thing. It's a that's the dog you don't want to poke with the stick. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Just he's just amazing. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Has anyone here seen it? No, no, no. Oh, Yay, are you all coming? Oh, I'm great. really excited. This is the first two. We're showing the first two. You'll Whoa. get to see the mailbox scene he talks about. Yeah. And, and you'll get to see some people's head explodes, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what you're talking oh, I'm so glad you guys are all coming. That's great. Well, okay, I makes good. my day. That's okay, that's good. Good. We should give them all 50 bucks to laugh at the whole box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, drinks. You know there's free drinks, right? Right, like this, uh, I'm gonna be listening. Like, did you laugh? Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm glad. I hope you guys like it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.